Asking the question in PICO format. In this module, we will be discussing how to develop a concise question to assist in our public health practice. From module one, we learned about the evidence-based public health framework from Bronson. Here is the graphic that displays that process. If you notice in step three, it is to develop a concise statement of the issue. This is where we are to ask a question. This initial statement of the issue, or asking the question, will then guide the literature search and the rest of the evidence-based process. PICO is a format that is used to write a good clinical question. The question needs to identify the patient, population, or problem that you intend to study, the intervention you plan to use, the comparison of one intervention to another if it is applicable, and the outcome that you anticipate. PICO is a mnemonic used to describe the four elements. P stands for patient, population, or problem. This is where you want to identify who is your patient or population or what is your problem. You may want to limit your population to a particular age group or other special subgroup. I represents intervention. Here is where you want to address what type of intervention you are trying to assess. Is it an educational intervention? Is it a preventative intervention such as an immunization clinic, or is it a policy change? With the intervention, you should try to be as specific as possible. C represents comparison. Is there a control group that you are comparing, or are you comparing your intervention with the gold standard of care? Sometimes your question may not have a comparison group, and that is okay. And O is for outcome. What do you hope to accomplish? Based on the information from the case study that was introduced in module one and can also be found on the next website, we were introduced to a population that had a high sexually transmitted infection rate among youth and young adults and a very interactive health department. One of the many research-based PICO questions could be, among inner city high school students, does sexually transmitted infection prevention education delivered via social media decrease the likelihood of risky behaviors and increase STI screening rates. Inner city high school students represents the population. The intervention is education delivered via social media and outcome is decrease in risky behaviors and increase STI screening rates. In this question, there is not a comparison group. Once a well-structured question is formulated, then you are in a better position to search the literature for evidence. Personally, I have found that a good PICO question helps guide and organize the search process, and it saves you time by not getting distracted during the search of literature. Let's practice identifying the different parts of the PICO question. Presented are titles from published research, and inside these titles, you can pick out the PICO question. Let's look at the first title. Can exercise increase fitness and reduce weight in patients with schizophrenia and depression? The population is the patients with schizophrenia and depression. The intervention is exercise. There is no comparison group, and the outcome is an increase in fitness and decrease weight. The second title, Meeting Physical Activity Guidelines is associated with reduced risk for cardiovascular disease in Black South African women a five and a half year follow-up study. What is the population? If you said black South African women, then you are correct. What is the intervention? It is meeting the physical activity guidelines and the outcome, reducing the risk factors of cardiovascular disease. Again, there is no comparison group. The third title, do soccer and Zumba exercise improve fitness and indicators of health among female hospital employees, a 12-week randomized control trial. Population would be female hospital employees. The intervention is so soccer and Zumba exercise, and the outcome that we want to measure would be improved fitness and indicators of health. Now, this study has a time period which indicates a 12-week randomized control trial. As a reminder of Bronson's framework of evidence-based public health practice, the first step is to conduct a community assessment. The second step is to quantify the issue, and the third step is to develop a concise statement of the issue. 
Here's an example from a fictitious community. The community data displays that there is persistent cervical infections associated with the human papilloma virus. With research, we know that HPV is the most common risk factor for cervical cancer. We know based on the CDC data that youth and young adults are at risk for contracting HPV. There are three HPV vaccines on the market that protect against HPV types 16 and 18 that cause most of the HPV cancers. And through the health department data, we know that many preteens and teenagers are not receiving the vaccine. Based on the community that was just presented, what questions do you have for this community? Hmm, perhaps you are thinking about primary prevention and educating the population at risk about getting the vaccine for HPV. Perhaps you are thinking about educating parents and the importance of the vaccine. You may even be thinking about educating healthcare providers about talking to preteens and teenagers about obtaining the vaccine. Perhaps you are thinking about an intervention of having a mass clinic to minister the HPV vaccine or to conduct an STI screening program. There are many possibilities. Once you have your PICO question, you will want to write it down and move to the next step of the evidence-based public health process, which is determining what is known through scientific literature. There are many forms and worksheets on the internet that will help you organize your search process. I recommend that you go to the Nursing Experts Translating the Evidence website to use the form that is displayed in this slide. Thank you for listening to this brief module on how to write a PICO question. Please continue on to the next module. This project has been funded in whole or in part with federal funds from the National Library of Medicine, National Institute of Health, Department of Health and Human Services under the grant number UG4LM013729 with the University of Iowa. Thank you.